First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday at 8 o'clock, we are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. No doubt. Playtime is over. you back with FWO, First World Radio, your host, Dr. Alain Bay, and also my man, Brother Fahim Richard L. Are you here, brother? I'm getting ready to bring you on. Uh, peace and honor, brother. God, how you doing tonight? I'm doing well, brother. How are you? Very well, very well, God. All right, we getting ready to get into it. Um, tonight, of course, we have Brother Panic back, and, of course, he's going to be breaking down the clip-off as well as also the dark side of the force dealing with Universe B, as well as also dealing with the Goetia. So we're getting ready to bring him on. Brother Panic, you here, brother? Yes, sir. What's going on, Brother Lee? Oh, we back, I right, We back, we Peace back. Peace, God. Peace. All right, Brother L, what's going on? How's everything? Everything very well, very well, boy. All right, we're down with the First Order Radio Mystery System. Another Wednesday night, we're about to put it in the can. Go. We're gonna deal with the clip off, as Aleem said. I know uh, last week, um, you know, I was out. Um, I thought we were gonna do it in two weeks, so the wires got crossed. Ain't nothing. That's the beauty of having a co-host such as Aleem. That you know, I'm not necessary all the time. He, he's able to take care of business, and so he did. I'm told. So this is technically a part two or a continuation on what Aleem started to lay down about, basically about the Kalipov, the dark side, Goetia, um, dark side of the force, which is pretty much all the same thing, just different ways of explaining a concept. Now, first thing we need to get out the way, because I see people still have not necessarily a problem with this, but a short, a shortness in your understanding and that shortness is we've learned to or tried to learn or have been taught to understand things with a certain amount of logic, a certain amount of reasoning. And logic and reasoning has now superseded uh, anything else as, as de facto standard of, of, of your learning, which is false. Logic and reason plays a role in what you're doing, 
But the idea of magic is that you're dealing with something that's highly illogical, something that um, beats the everyday rigmarole, the routine. So if you're looking in this conscious stuff to have the same logical effect as your normal life or to normalize it, then you then, just by default, you have made whatever you're trying to do unmagical because you have made it normal. So the ancients understood, and the more you study the occult in various different subjects in the occult, what you'll find is that this stuff starts to contradict itself. You have a natural... uh, it was not natural. You have a now. You have a mindset that was trained for you to find one logical answer, a, 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 a right or a wrong, a um, a definite, uh, absolute. But the ancients didn't think of it that way. They looked at it as those who know, and those who didn't know. So no matter how you come to the end result. It was about being in the know. So there was no one method. There's certain things that are obvious, but there was no one method to find light or no one method to find, um, to, to, uh, to tackle one subject. The idea was for you to be able to satisfy yourself and come up with a workable answer that you made real. So my interpretation of the Dolph, Necronomicon, which is also a part of the Calipal, uh, the Goetian, all of these things, it, 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 you may look at it as a lot of education, a lot of study and research, but it's not infallible. No one is infallible. So if there's something that may resonate with you, just because I or someone else said it doesn't mean it's absolute. You may find another path, and we both could be right. So that's the first thing we need to understand when we study in this. Um, because this stuff is where it gets a little bit more complicated than your your average everyday Facebook bullshit that you guys are dealing with. Now, and so much so that a, a lot of the stuff that I haven't touched on in blog talk, or I've just touched on in blog talk because I reserved a lot of this writing for my book, actually. Because this is where I go hard. This is Because this is, in my opinion, the cream de la creme when you're dealing with um, yourself, because the idea of dealing with this consciousness ultimately is to bring darkness out of light. That is the core of what you're doing. And that darkness rep- is represented as the Galatia Calip off, uh, the tunnels of set, um, Necronomicon. So a lot of those th- subjects I tackle in depth and um, I tackle in depth and go very hard at uh, 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 breaking it down and, and, and connecting it to the body, connecting it to the mind, and making it practical. So some of the things I'm going to go over today is going to make this shit kind of practical for you. You can study Kabbalah and the Kalipov, if you really understand, uh, damn near for the rest of your life, and have something to do. So... There's no way in one free night that you're going to get a, uh, uh, okay, uh, people are hearing an echo. Does everyone hear an echo? Just put it in the chat room. No, it's not. Yeah, I, I don't know. It sounds, you sound good on this end. Yeah, because I hear myself and it sounds good. Y'all still hear this echo? There is a mic open. Someone's saying it's not that bad. Are y'all able to understand what I'm saying? That's the key. Can y'all understand what I'm saying? Blog talk is uh, never perfect. I just want to say it's much better. I'm going to keep going. Okay. Yeah. I think, uh, I don't know, Valine or, or Brother L, you may have a mic open or something turned up. And on the radio and it's echoing if the nah, you don't want, it'll do nah, you don't Nah, you don't the one that I got on here, God. Oh, right now. Uh, and and Brother L's mic is open too, right? Is his radio turned down? 
Yeah. I, I oh, you said he's all. He's all. Oh, I put, oh, okay. put his all just in case, right? So I'll turn oh, yours yeah. back on, brother. Yeah. L, uh, once we um, get these complications done here with the with the um, vocal. Okay, it sounds like people yeah. are saying that it sounds good now. So we're going to yeah. keep going. All right. So there's no way you could learn Kabbalah in one free night. That's impossible. Um, but we can drop a lot of the concepts here, and that's what we'll do. So if people want to study it now, the first thing we need to understand um, is the difference between Kabbalah and the Kalipov. Under the same, well, it's, and it's really, it's all Kabbalah, I guess you can call it that. But it's two different trees, two different concepts and, and two different, what they call trees of life. In Kabbalah, which is the most popular, first you need to understand in Kabbalah, to show you how important it is, um, 90% of Western magic is Kabbalah-based. Let me say that again. 90% of Western magic is Kabbalah-based. So all that shit that Crowley's doing, Kabbalah-based. All that shit that Dion Fortune, all of these big shots in the white world of magic we're doing is all based upon Kabbalah because Kabbalah is probably the most logical system. It, it, it's, it's what they call pathworking system meaning that every single concept, every single situation, every single word, every single number, every single date can be Kabbalistically decoded. Therefore, you can have an answer for every single event that happened. You can have a, 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 a common denominator, an energy profile for any event that happens, good or bad. Therefore, you can use that to control, manipulate um, um, earthly events. And this is basically the tree of life. Now, um, there's another tree called the tree of knowledge. Now, we've first heard of this tree in the Bible, and this is where they give it, this is where they give it away. If you were to listen to the average uh, occultists today, they would go into detail about the falsehood of the Kalipov. How the Kalipov is a shadow world, a world that is a side effect of the true Kabbalistic world. This is pretty much the standard. Um, the most information you'll find on the Kalipov was put out by two people. McGregor Mathers and Aleister Crowley. At one point, they both collaborated and came up with the Goetia, but both were occultists in their own right, of course. And that's where you get the most information and where you get the most misinformation. And what I noticed about this particular misinformation, whenever it comes to anything dark, that's where you find the most misinformation because it becomes Negro-related. Another example of this would be uh, the Apollo. Apollo is a magical, just one of the many magical systems out of Africa. One of the ones that got shoved under the table as Ifa got bigger and people held on to that as the national African religion, even though Voodoo is a collaboration of hundreds of different systems and, and actually is not from one system. It's, it's a collaboration of all the slaves coming together and adding a little bit of this and a little bit of that. In Milo Regards, uh, Regards' books, The Secrets of Voodoo, he gives a whole list of all the tribes that contributed, all the cultures that contributed to voodoo. Paolo was one of the ones that got left behind. It had a reputation of being quite evil, and when actually what it was was the so the darker side to the lighter side of Ifa. So what survived was the lighter side. This, of course, because based upon religion, which we'll get into, good and bad um, became such a big line in the sand. So the same thing with the Kalipoff versus the Tree of Life. This line in the sand um, 
um, this line in the sand uh, became just good and evil, and people were able to play that up in your psyche. Calip off bad, tree of life good. Now, with Paulo, before Raul Carnazares, Baba Raul Carnazares wrote a book, Paulo was demonized, savage, um, and, 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 and devil worship. Then Ra- Baba Raul Carnazares wrote a book called The Book on Paulo. And in it, he f- broke down that there are four different types of Paulo. And one was Masonic, one was religious, one's called, the two we're interested in is called Paulo Monte and Paulo Miambe. And Paulo Monte, which is what he deals with, he was able to take all the Orishas and connect them to Paulo deities. So this made it safe. And all of a sudden, you had a bunch of black people who were now Polaros because um, they started recognizing deities that uh, they had been worshiping, so he made it safe. The darker side of Palo is called Palo Mayombe. Now, most of those books were written in Spanish, and you couldn't get any of that information on Spanish until one guy, Carlos Montenegro, wrote an English a book in English. And to this day is probably the most demonized man for giving out those secrets. I've heard everything. He starts cults, rapes women, uh, people are fucked up because they fucked with him. He was everything under the sun. On Amazon, they disrespected and destroyed this book because he, just because he gave out these secrets about Paulo Mayombe, which he did not connect to the Orishas. Just, just their hate for what people don't understand. But what we noticed was there were 11 deities in that book. So since we are not of a religious mindset, this is Bobby and myself, we decided to get directly with the deities, you know. And, of course, we heard everything under the sun. You're not real Polaros. We was like, well, that's a compliment. We would, you know, you know, no one calls ourselves any of that. We deal, we deal peer to peer with these deities, and what Bobby uncovered was these eleven deities coincide with the Kalipov because the Kalipov, unlike the Tree of Life, which has ten sifferers or ten energy spheres, the Kalipov has eleven, including what they call the Doth. So we was able to correspond. 11 Palo deities with the Kalipov, and once we did this and put this ancient information back, it was like we activated these Palo deities once we put it in its proper place, because really, that's how this stuff works when you psychologically add it to uh, the energy where it's supposed to be, because you're juicing it up um, exactly where it's supposed to be, as opposed to coming up with your own new invented shit. So we started noticing it was working. Now, to address where they talk about the Kalipov, they recognize the Kalipov as, they call it the shells, that after the Sifras and the Tree of Life have ran over with their energy, that it created this demon, uh, this, these demon spheres, which became the Kalipov. Now, that doesn't make no sense if you listen to the wording, if you listen to common sense wording, because it said that this tree is behind the tree of life. This tree is behind the tree of life. Now, if I said to you, Puff Daddy is behind Biggie, you wouldn't say Puffy's weaker. You would say it is because Puffy, the foundation, brought you Biggie. You would say he brought you Biggie. So the tree of life represents Biggie, and that may be powerful, but there's a bad boy record that's behind it. So if I say the Kalipov is behind the tree of life, then that means it's something that generates what you see before you. If you really want to get down to it, the real occultist should understand that the shell is actually what they call the tree of life. Now, if you're still confused about that, all you have to do is go to your Bible, and it tells you straight out. God said 
that you can eat from the tree of life all day, but you can't eat from the tree of knowledge because you will become just like him. Now, there's this snake in the tree of knowledge. Now, Kabbalistically, each word in Kabbalah has a numerical value. And what they do is say, if one word has the same numerical value, even though it may seem unrelated as the other word, then they make that, that word is, is, is scientifically related. So, for instance, the word love and unity has the same numerical value. So they would deduct based upon the Kabbalah, uh, what is it, new, new around, uh, tetragrammaton or whatever they call it. They would deduct that those are the two same things as the words serpent and Messiah have the same numerical value. So Kabbalistically, based upon its own word, they're telling you that the serpent is a Messiah and the serpent itself hangs in the tree of life. I'm, I'm sorry, the tree of knowledge. Now this is interesting because... If you look at the tree of life with the ten ciphers, the one that is most accepted, what you find is to get to the behind the tree, there's a hidden cipher called Doth, which means knowledge. D A A T H, where you even get the name Doth Vader, and we'll get into Star Wars as well, which is in which is a a, a, a great Kabbalistic story i.e. the dark side versus the light side of the force. What they're talking about is the Kalipoff versus um, the tree of life. But even better, before we even go there, um, there are plenty of movies, but the latest movie is the last Thor movie. Watch that again with this understanding. And what you'll find is they talk about the dark world being the first world. This is all in this movie Thor that the dark world is the first world, and you have the elves, which is the L, telling you that this world of light that they live in, Asgard, and the rest of that shit should have never been, that it's a mistake, it's a flaw, which is straight out of Gnosticism, that this world is a secondary world. It's actually a true occultist understands that this so-called life is actually the shell world, is actually the shadow world. The real world is actually the world of universe B, is what they call it, the world to come, which is the original first world, which is what we're calling the Kalipoff, the suppressed world. Now, how it works to the body, it, the Kalipoff represents your subconscious mind. It represents the energy that brings forth the performance. The everyday Sifroff is the performance. How do, how do you know this is powerful? There is an occultist called Lon Marlo Duquette. It's actually on Facebook. And I actually got him, or I got Miss Blue to do a show with him. And and she was really fresh at the time, so she wasn't sure what to ask him. But I wanted to question this motherfucker. So I stayed on the other line and fed her the questions that I wanted to ask Lon Marlo Duquette. Because he never would have gave me an audience. And when I got to the portion, I let him go because he's a master Kabbalist. He's probably one of the best at explaining. I will give this white man props. He actually took over the OTO, which is Crowley's organization. He's one of the best white men who explained Crowley's madness. He did a book called uh, Understanding Crowley's uh, Thoth to Row because it's hard to understand Crowley's Thoth to Row. And he did a book breaking that down. He also did a book that everyone must get called The Chicken Soup Kabbalah, where he, go, where he breaks down Kabbalah for a person who's never seen it before, and he breaks down each sifra. And so as soon as I got to the Doth, as soon as I got um, this, oh, uh, Lon Milo Duquette, L-O-N, middle name M-I-L-O, and you're going you're gonna to have to go for Duquette, um, but he made the Chicken Soup Kabbalah, if you look that up. Or he made um, Understanding Crowley's Thoth Tarot, which is a very popular book. Um, there's other books before the days go. Anything he writes is right to the point. You know what I'm saying? He did a lot, he did a lot of sexual books. Um, he's that standard white boy. 
if John Anthony West is doing something, they interview him. And like I say, um, I think that's it. Um, somebody spelled it in the room. He's on Facebook. He'll friend you. He, he seems like a pretty, you know, cool guy. But I told we got to the part. I asked her to break down Calippo for him. And that motherfucker would not talk about this shit. His answer was officially, oh, he said, well, I'm having too much trouble with the tree. I don't know about the clip off, and he left it alone. So I'm like, well, this nigga don't know shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying this, and I was telling this to Bobby. Bobby's like, that's some bullshit. That motherfucker did a whole book on clip off at one point. I said, this nigga, he said, then Bobby, he said he didn't want to tell no niggas. Or they really understand how powerful it is. And because he does sell books, what they don't want to do is tell you to fuck with it and it fuck a nigga up because it does change your psyche. So for them, they'll be fucked up. For us, that's that's right up our alley. You know what I'm saying? Now, let me see some other shit. Uh, More practically, we talked about there's something called the tunnels of set. The tunnels of set are nothing more than the synaptic nerves in your brain. Um, Synaptic nerves are these nerves that, if they're not stimulated, they actually die. Your memories. So, if you once you if you remember something, that means one of your synaptic nerves have fired up. That's the tunnels of set. When you have full recall. It becomes the tentacles of Cthulhu. So, so a, a conscious mind that's having a, a ancient recall or being able to get back online is actually the mind of, is, is actually the, the the rising of Cthulhu in the mind. Uh, and I don't know if y'all understand that. If I have to go into more of that, the stone for the doff, the energy for the doff is called, is black obsidian. What black obsidian does is a volcanic volcanic rock that brings out subconscious memories, and these subconscious memories is technically the clip off in the body. Um, now, if you watch Star Wars, to show you how important this is, if you watch the entire series, in the clip off, what they call is the great work, is you going from a Malkuth frequency to what they call Kether, the highest of the Sifroth. So Malkuth is number one. The highest Sifroth is number 10. 10, 0 plus 1 is 1 again, so it's like where you started off at, Kether. So that's represented as Mary Magdalene, the whore, number 1, number 10, rather, which is Malkuth, and Mary the virgin represents Kether, number one. It represents that polarity in between from top to bottom. Now, and this is just a way of trying to explain what they call the psychological great work as you move up this ladder. In Kabbalah, they break it down into four worlds. Um, and actually, that four worlds corresponds with Hindu uh, caste system. The top world is is for uh, the uh, Brahma or the prophet level or the priesthood level. The second world is from the artist or the creative level. The third wor- level world is for the warrior level. The fourth world is for the farmer who works with the land. So that in the caste system, if I was born to a farmer, that's how they would define what I came to earth to do. So if I was born to a farmer, I'm not going to be a doctor in the old world. That's why you hear in the old world they talk about duty more than they talk about what you want to be. In America, they fucked you up with your ego. You got chocolate, vanilla, or strawberry ice cream. Over in the old world, you just do your duty. Why are you doing that? It's my duty. What's my role as a son? It's my role as a this. It's my role as a that. Because it was a way of shutting down the ego, and your life path was dictated by who you were born to. 
in I in, in Ifa you would have a particular deity on your head or your ori, and that's actually a caste system as well. So if you were a child of Obatala, you had to live and act and behave a certain way. Child of Yemen Yah live act and uh, behave a certain way, and you had a role in society. This is caste systems because it would shut down the e- ego, and you were born to your purpose. Now you just be anything. You're a lawyer, a doctor, a butcher, baker, candlestick maker. This this let the ego go wild. Now, so in when you're doing this great work or you're guided because it's a path working system, um, you're actually working your way up in terms of a transformation to your pure self. That's what you've seen in Star Wars on on played out on a bigger scale. With Anakin, first of first of all, you got at the bottom Malkuth, which represents Earth. Right above, see, uh, there's ten sifras, but they talk about there's a middle pillar, and, and you're supposed to walk that middle pillar. And on the middle pillar, the sifras are Earth, Moon, uh, Sun, Darth, Kether. So what you've seen in Star Wars was this whole thing played out. Anakin, as a child, was a slave. That represented Malkuth. The next step, Anakin went to the Jedi Council, and that represent what they call Tifera or the Sun. And that's two Sifras above. That's the Earth, the Moon, then the uh, Sun. And the Jedi or the Sun on the Tree of Life touches every has a path to every other Sifra. Therefore, therefore, it balances the force. And when he got to the to the council, they said, we can't make you a Jedi because you're worried about your mother. They were talking about the Sifra below him. You were worried about, um, so they was worried about him slipping down. And they told him he had too much anger, which they were worried about him going through the Darth. And sure enough, the next, he eventually goes to the Darth, hits the dark side, probes his dark side, and the Darth also is represented as Death or Osiris. Osiris represents the gateway to the underworld um, or the father of the underworld, which is the Darth. That's why Osiris lays in a coffin with his arms crossed, and Darth Vader would also stand there and cross his arms like Osiris because um, it represents that gateway or that path to true enlightenment. The idea is to walk through that path um, to eventually go beyond. Now, what's beyond? Above Ketha, which is the first emanation, you have what they call triple stage darkness. The Ein, the Ein so and the Ein so far. Understand this. C. Freeman L. talked about this. So there's basically two good ways to die. He said, when you die, he said he was talking about trying to sit people up so they could leave through the crown chakra. If they don't leave through the crown chakra, they leave through the back of the neck, the medulla oblongata. Medulla oblongata on the human body is where the dolph is lo- the dolph is located. So most of us leave through the back of the neck, and this indicates that you're probably going to come back. Um, if you leave through the crown, the iron, the iron so and the iron so far. You are now going to three stages uh, of birth again. The same three trimesters that you went through to get here is the same three trimesters of, of of true light to get into that true world. In other words, you're leaving. You're not coming back. Um, but to go through the, this, actually, if you ask me, is the underworld. Because this world is a reaction to the true world. So this is the actual true underworld. We're in the underworld now. You don't die and go to the underworld. We're in the underworld now. We're in the 12 stages of the underworld now, which is nothing more than the 12 fucking Zodiac. Those are your 12 labors, the shit that's happening here. Now, we we need to be able to understand that our answers lie in the Kalipov, the shit that brings forth here, because that's the subconscious mind. So the risen Osiris is nothing but going into the iron, the iron so and the iron so far, or the Darth coming into the world of the real. 
See, they look at it as the three cipheras that is above the doth is the actual archetype real world. If you look at the tree of life, there's a triangle going up, then it folds down, then it folds down again, then Malkuth comes. So you've heard Brother Phil say this is this world is a copy of the world of a copy of a world and then an afterthought because that's how far from the reality you are. Above the Darth is the architect real world and perhaps you could say the Garden of Eden or the land of Osiris until you move on beyond this reality. Now in Star Wars Well, first, let's say the Sifroth are connected by what they call 22 paths. Um, these 22 paths correspond to the 24 Hebrew letters. And they said these letters are actually what seals us in the universe, these 22. Therefore, everything could be connected to these letters. And therefore, this whole matrix is built on these letters. And they, the letters are broken down into 12, 7, and 3 master letters. All numbers of lockdown. 12 is lockdown. That's the zodiac. 7 is just 7 chakras. That's a lockdown. And 3 is third dimension. That's a lockdown. Or add to the 22. 23 is the hidden number of the doff. And it is represented also as five. Two plus three equals five. This five is is the same five points of the five pointed star or the five pointed head of Baphomet, um, um, representing the symbol of controlling the demons or the Darth. So you have this enigma of twenty three that comes up. There's twenty three gateways, twenty three degrees where the face on Mars is. 23 degrees latitude, this and that, where you need a triangle is, and there's something called the enigma of 23. First, remember there was a Jim Carrey movie called 23. Watch it again. It is it, it, is is he gets obsessed with the enigma of 23, but what you see is his dark side, a hidden part throughout the movie because I just watched it again. Throughout the movie, this 23 is bringing out this darkness in him because he's actually entering the Darth or the Five. Um, in Star Wars, um, A New Hope, Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Chewbacca sneak into the detention block to rescue Princess Leia. She's locked in 23 in, in cell, uh, actually cell AA-23, which represents she's in the Darth because she was captured under Darth Vader. There's a goddess called Eris, uh, ancient Greek goddess. Um, and it, she means strife. She's the Greek goddess of chaos. She, um, strife and discord, her name translated into Latin is Discordia, discordia which means discord. Um, she's the daughter of the void. They call it, the, the Darth is called the void. 23 is considered lucky for her, or unlucky, depending on your perspective. Sinister, strange, uh, sacred goddess of Eris. And in the Necronomicon, um, that number is connected, 23, to the what they call the unholy gods. Now, when you hear unholy gods, what they're talking about is gods not of this world. Unholy spirits. Or unclean spirits is another one they'll say. When they say like a woman's menstruating, she's she's uh, she's she's dealing with unclean spirits. It just means spirits that are not of this realm. So when they talk about that, they talk about gateway shit, which is Kalipov shit. Um, there's a guy named William S. Burroughs. Uh, he he did a short story in 1967. And this is where you get the term 23 skidoo. If anybody was, uh, remember Bugs Bunny, he used to always say that shit, 23 skidoo. And um, that what that really means is it's time to leave. Um, because what, what uh, Burroughs came up with was the cycle of 23. He said when um, whatever you do, whenever 23 comes in, 
you're going to be fucked up. You know what I'm saying? The 23rd, and, and, you know, he went through this whole thing about 23, and it's 23 Enigma. And so in the 20s, everything was uh, 23 Skidoo. Now, let's see. Uh, in Star Wars as well, um, for the all the book geeks who read the shit, well, I don't want to say geeks because I'm about to blow my man Tef up. Tef read all the books and and um, Tef read all the books and what he told me was they don't frown on the dark side as much as they do in the movies. If you remember, Sam Jackson played a character called Mace Windu and Mace Windu um... Mace Windu at the uh in the books uses the dark side of the force. Uses the dark side of the force. Um understand two pineal five times seventy two is is that's where you get see there's seventy two Goetia. So when you do five times seventy two, you get uh three sixty. And 360 is that round circle representing the pineal gland. So when you have 72, that's where this five-pointed star comes in again. When, you, when you're dealing with the Goetia, let me see if we're missing anything. Um, what's this? Uh, did we leave anything out? Um, brother Lee. Nah, nah, that I know of, brother. You, you going in? All right, yeah. Because I think we could get to some of these questions now. Because I think that's pretty much the bulk of it, the understanding. So the uh, so okay. as let me see, but I think there may be a couple more things we could bring up. I think at the end of the day, um. We need to understand, we need to turn it around. We need to turn around um, the concept. What you'll find, you'll find very little on the clip off, um, but now with the web, you'll find more. But like I said, they'll put it down as if it's something bad or secondary. But again, we need to understand, everything black, they make bad or secondary. That's the standard of the day. See, religion is where... We got fucked up. Religion is where, um, see, prior to religion, we had we had a very small to no concept of good or evil. So black became evil, and white became great. That is absolute nonsense. They're talking about polarity as opposed to good and bad. See, because and Brother Phil also said this, which I found to be interesting was. You know, if you were in an all-black room, you couldn't see. But if you were in an all-white room, you couldn't see neither. It's the contrast. Um, um, it's a, it's a, con- it's the contrast that is that uh, that makes the difference. So it has nothing to do with good or bad. It has everything to do with energy. So you, there's no, there's nothing that wants you to transform. So there's no, there's nothing that's going to tell you to lip off where it's at. You have to study enough to have that breakthrough, that understanding. See, um, and this is one of the things I had to learn. Like, I was reading um, William Henry, and he's dropping all the science, but he would never say Jesus was a phony. I'm sitting there going, anybody who's doing all this knows that Jesus does not exist at the time. So I'm having this conversation with Bobby, and Bobby's like, well, you got to understand they're selling books. So why even should they waste their time? Because half the people read that still believe in Jesus. He said, why waste their time telling them ain't no Jesus? If you know ain't no fucking Jesus, he don't need to say it. He said, he just leaves it alone and lets you come up with it. So I'm like, well, I get it. You basically, it's your level that you have to deal with. So we need to understand more than anything when we're studying this stuff about your level. If your level is to a point where you still see good and evil, bad and good and fair, then don't even waste your time. This this kind of shit is is is, is 
It's for people who have gone beyond the fear and understand you're dealing with power. You get what I'm saying? Like I said, all you have to do is listen to the basic words where you do hear this stuff. When they're talking about there's a, a, a God doesn't want you to eat off the tree of knowledge because you'll be like him, that's the first goddamn thing. He is telling you in the Bible that if you fuck with the tree of knowledge or the sphere of God, which is the fruit that he's, the serpent is offering you, this hidden fruit, this dog, because the separate is looked at as fruit on the tree of life. If you fuck with it, it's telling you, you will be a god. That's what it's telling you. Ain't no, you ain't getting around that. That's still in Genesis. You get what I'm saying? You ain't getting around that. So if you if you can understand just that alone, and that's what you're doing, you already you already fucking with fire. You get what I'm saying? And understanding just core things about the serpent. You know what I'm saying? If the serpent is a messiah, and that's a Kabbalistic reality, and the Messiah is giving you um, fruit from the tree of knowledge, ain't, ain't nothing more to say. So you, you need to go on with that mentality and understand. Because like I said, you'll never learn Kabbalah in one night. It's something you have to study. You also want a book, John Bonner's book, The Magical Kabbalah, Magical Primer. Those are good starter books. Um, McGregor Mathers, I think it's Kabbalah Unveiled is Mathers, right? Or, or you want a book called Kabbalah Unveiled. Um, you want um, anything by Lon Milo Duquette. And those are good starter books. And then there will be other books that come along that you Kabbalistically can fuck with. You know what I'm saying? So I guess we can go to Q&A or, or whatever. I, I think we done covered it all. All right, let's go to area code eight one seven. Area code eight one seven. You're on the line. Um, yes, my yes, my question was um, last week. You had talked about how people can connect to their ancestors seven generations on both sides of their family. Yes, basically what uh-huh. I was saying was that your concentration. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I was saying that you are concentration of generations on your mother and father's side. So, yes. So, 14 generations okay. um, is what your DNA, um, what you have the ability in order to tap into right here and now. Um, so, yeah, in that way. So, my question was, one, I wanted to know where I could find more information on that. And, two, if you don't know, like, one side of your family, like if you don't know your dad or, you know, if you were – an orphan, and you don't know your mother or your father, would you still be able to tap into that? Yes, because um, the DNA doesn't change, you know, if, um, in that sense. Matter of fact, DNA is malleable, so it don't change as far as your ancestral connection, but it is malleable, and which means that you're able to open it up at any given time. Um, for example, um, through meditation and through breathing exercises, you can actually tap into the ancestor realm, like um, we were talking about last week, we talked about the Medulam Legata. Medulam Legata um, is the area in which that you tap at in order to open up your past lives and your, um, you know, access to the Akashic Records. So that's where you will um, actually um, tap in at. That's what Brother Panda was talking about earlier, is that that's the area in which that um, the soul leads from out the body um, for those who reincarnate. Right. I mean, I do a lot of meditation, so I understand that. I'm just trying to understand, like, um, like in my dreams, I understand dreams. And as far as, like, my mother and stuff like that, seeing those type of ancestors that I know of, but, like, just what right. you were saying, like, the the you were saying that we can have the same knowledge or the same understandings of what they went through or, you know, like we have right. that in us because we're a part of them. So that's what I'm kind of right. trying to Understand where can I get that type of knowledge from? Because um, yeah, that I'm is, not really that is within the Rosicru- right. That is within the Rosicrucian teachings. You can read that within okay. the Rosicrucian teachings, um, which is um, actually coming from out of um, the ancient traditions of Africa. I mean, you can get many um, African books. That you can get um, the book called African Spirituality. I can't remember the author name right now, but you can get that, and um, they go in about that particular um, subject. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, we're going to go to area code 763. Area code 763, you're on the line. Yeah. 
Peace. Area code 763. All right. Now we're going to go area code 251. Area code 251, you're on the line. Peace, uh, Dr. Lamb. Uh, Dr. Peace, L on peace. Uh, Dr. Um, peace, Brother Pam. This is DJ Full Moon. Uh, I, I ain't really want to get off the topic tonight. Uh, but I was uh, I asked you, Brother Panic, a while back, and you email about forty, and do that represent completion or uh, renewing or? Just look it up, man. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all are asking shit that don't even fucking matter. And All right, man, like I ain't want to get off the subject. Trying to figure about that I mean like like really you trying to find out what the number forty means? Yeah, about like the forty day fast, and you know just uh, uh, about the number forty. But I, I, I'll do that. I'll look it up. But like I said, I ain't want to uh, get yeah, off. Of uh, right, but but well, um, um, forty just symbolizes spiritual maturity, the mastering of the earth and fire element, and bringing them together, which is ether, uh, which is basically your spirit or your breath. So. Um, in order to control those four elements, you must master the signs of breath. That's what the number 40 symbolizes. All right. I've been doing those six seconds of uh, meditation, you know, the breathing, you know, that you put me on. Right. But but, but that's all. Right. Like, I ain't want to get off such I'll just uh, listen to the show tonight. All right. Uh, Peace out. Uh, all right. Let's go back to the phone line. Hey, let's go to 614. We're called 614. You're on the line. Well, shoot, I don't want to cuss me out. This, um, how you doing, Dr. Eileen? What's up, Panic? Hey, hey. What's up? Well, I just had a question. Um, when we were talking about Trayvon and how people was marching and putting on who's buying skittles and stuff, how that was trapping him in, and he was ready to, you know, he was wanting to, you know, go to that next level, but people were doing those things and that was kind of holding them back. How is that different than... Uh, setting up altars and calling on our ancestors, our grandpas, our grandmas. How is that not allowing your, your, them to... Your mentality. Your, well, I also said this to your mentality. The idea is um, when you set them altars, calling your grandfather, just celebrating that where they are. It's a, it's a, it's a you scratch my back, I scratch yours. With Trayvon, you're not celebrating where he is. You're crying about his ass being gone. So okay, the okay. energy you're pulling on him as opposed to giving him anything. In, in your altar, you're supposed to be putting down stuff to give to them yeah. so they could give oh. back to you. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you so much. Peace. Peace. All right. All right, we're going to go back to the phone lines. We got area code 806. Area code 806, you're on the line. Peace, peace, 806. All right, come back on when you get a chance. You go on to area code 215, area code 215, you're on the line. Peace, how you doing? This is Mo, Philly. Peace. Well, uh, hey, my question is, I, I know you touched on the path working. When it comes to path working, is it more of a meditative state that you got to go from path to path? No, um, with path working, good, good question, finally. Well, with path working, that's the whole point, is like it, it takes you out of the meditation almost. You get what I'm saying? Because the answers are logical. You get what I'm saying? So so you can look at Kabbalah and say, well, well, what's what's the question? You say, well, 5 plus 4 minus 7, okay, that equals 2. So that that'll be your answer. You don't have to meditate. Something's going to lead you somewhere. You get what I'm saying? So you, you're basically doing addition and subtraction. Okay, Saturn's in Pluto, which equals Mars. And Mars is in, in Venus, which equals this. That means that. If she did that, that is connected to the fool. Or, or that's connected to the high priest. Or that's connected to this. To rote. It's all path working. You can do a reading. A Kabbalistic reading is basically a tarot reading. So it takes you out of the meditation, actually. There's nothing to think about. You get what I'm saying? Okay. All right, my next question. That's what half working is. That's that's why Madonna and all of those fuck with Kabbalah, because, because it takes you out of the melanated state. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You don't need melanin. You can use more logic to deal with it. 
as opposed to having a channel and tap into anything. You get what I'm saying? Everything has an explanation. Everything has a numerical value. So you can you can look at a word, come up with the numerical value, and come up with the understanding. You can say, oh, if they're saying that, that word means war. So you understand this person is coming to you as a war entity, just based upon their name. You get what I'm saying? So you don't have to say channel and say this person's an enemy. You can look at their name and what they're doing and probabilistically work it out. Like that, like the uh, complete magician's table, where it tells you number four uh-huh. all the way across right. the board. That's path working, where you can where you can find a logical answer. Okay. Now, when it comes to not logical to, answer. Now, when it comes to Gnosticism and Kabbalah, I, I, I'm trying to understand. I know that Kether spoke about Bina. Bina represents the tears, so it would be Saturn. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, I read a book called... So, I'll just say that again. Well, um, each each Sifra represents a planet. Um. Anyway, so the Saturn is a Titan, so it's actually above the dark. And the other, um, starting at Chokma, under the Doth becomes Jupiter, which is uh-huh. which is Zeus, which is basically Zeus, which is the God realm. So the Titans are above the Doth. We 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 are Titans because we are we are before the Doth or the Void or before Chaos. So uh-huh. in Greek mythology, Kronos, which is Saturn swallow his kids and then Rhea gives him a rock and he thinks it's Zeus. She hides Zeus then Zeus is born. That's Chokma. That's below the abyss. Then Zeus makes his father, Kronos, throw throw up all the rest of his brothers and sisters. That's all the rest of the Sifras coming down the tree. And then he takes um, Saturn and puts him in Malkuth, the underworld. So even that is, is this constant story. Um, the Sifra of Jupiter, which is the first builder, is nothing more than Ptah. Jupiter is Ptah, nothing more than the first builder god. So you'll start to see these things run over and over to each other, but they're all defined and labeled to where you could just you you, you don't have to um, you don't have to use creativity. You could just follow the yellow brick road with, with this damn Kabbalah. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But when, when it comes you're doing to... Voodoo... Mm-hmm. Say again? I was going to say, but when it comes to the Kalipov, like, it would be the, the, the polar opposite of, of the of the uh, tree of life than when it comes to the mythology, correct? Well, look at it this way. The Kalipov is dealing with the soul, which is the true you. Everything on top of you is, a, is, a, is the illusion. So technically, the tree of life is the actual shell. The tree of life is the actual false world. How do you say we living in an illusion, but this tree of life is real? That doesn't make any sense. You get know what I'm saying? But we do know universe B is the real universe, which is the Kalipov. The universe to come, which is actually the first universe. So, I would, you could say it's opposite, but you need to look at it as the Kalipov is the world before this fake world. Kalipov is what's generating this illusionary world. You get what I'm saying? We have now taken the illusionary world and has made that the cream de la creme. But the true world is the world of the darkness. This is actually the world of the shells. And we know that because this shit is a fake-ass world. So I look at it as uh, the, the world of the real versus what it has become. Now, if again, as I pointed out earlier, if you look at that movie Thor, he's, if you understand just ex- only what I spoke about in this hour, you can watch Thor and, and you'll hear everything I said in that movie. What the elf is saying. This world was never supposed to be. This is a mistake. We need to get back to what it was. They, they tell you in all these movies, before there was light, there was darkness. 
They're talking about the clip off. They're talking about the true world. It's just that we are so programmed to say darkness is bad that that it don't even sound like nothing. You get what I'm saying? But if we know darkness is the first world, darkness is good, they're telling you right to your face. Every goddamn third movie, before there was light, there was the world of the darkness. And you like, oh, that's some bad shit before Jesus came, or before good came, or before when the, the gods came and all of this shit. No, they're telling you, no, this was nigga rule, nigga understood, and darkness was the code of the day, or what, we, or what we're calling darkness now. It's only dark now because we don't understand it. Okay. Uh, in Thor, where they were, you remember, like, they were throwing their keys through that portal? Was that symbolic of going through the dark? Do you remember that part? Um, which, like, the second Thor? The second Thor. Remember the they second were one or the first one? The, in the second oh, one. Oh, you talking about when he, when he went through the Bill Frost? Yeah, like they no, were that was throwing... symbolic. That was symbolic they... of the pineal gland. Oh, okay. When um, Hemondor was, you talking about when Hemondor was standing at the Rainbow Bridge? Oh, like in the second floor. Remember they were throwing things through this invisible portal, like oh, through key. that gateway. Uh, I, I guess. I mean, you know, you they just made a gate. I don't wouldn't necessarily say the doff as much as they just created like this wormholes and gateways. To different re- to different realities and dimensions, you get what I'm saying. So they was making that point. I said okay. the doff would be uh, if 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 I had to say what was the doff, or um, it represented that dark matter that they were trying to get. Oh, he was like, you don't know what to do with that dark matter, which is melanin, basically. He's like, bitch, give me my give me my shit back. You just wasting my shit. You know what I'm saying. To give it back so I can open it up, and and he said basically he wanted to open up that world. You get what I'm saying? So that void and, and so on and so forth, you know, represented her. But just listen to what he was saying. Yo, y'all should have never been here. This shit is a mistake. You saying this straight out? I was sitting there going, oh shit! I didn't even think that movie was gonna be shit. I said that's probably the best movie I've seen, fucking with science, one of the best this year. If you know what you're watching. If you don't know what you're watching, it's just another evil dog dude trying to fuck up the fuck up what we got. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But other than that, if you know what he, if, if just by understanding what we're talking about tonight, that shit is fire. I wish it was out and you was able to watch it tonight. You you would definitely say, oh man, this is exactly what he's talking about. He's telling you straight out if you see it in that context. Thor. Second. Okay. All right, I mean, tonight you put a lot of things in perspective for me because I was reading, studying Gnosticism, and the way you broke mm-hmm. down the clip uh, off really helped me. So now i got to go back to my book again. Good. And get it. Well, I the Gnostic it. understanding is, okay, that, well, if you put it in the Gnostic context, that uh, uh, when they talk about the Demiurge and that there's this creator God, that this, this false creator God that created this bullshit world. They're talking about the front side of the tree. So oh. that's where you get in the Bible, God wants you to eat from this tree because it represents the demiurge who wants you to be alive. He wants you to be on this motherfucker all happy, content, ignorant in the Garden of Eden, which represents earth as well. Ignorance is bliss. See, when they ate from the tree of knowledge, they realized they were naked in the shame, meaning they realized they, they have nothing. They're human beings now. So it's the same conscious place. Come conscious, you can't go to Walmart like you used to go to Walmart, Disney World and all of that shit. You're out of the garden because ignorance is bliss. So you have this, this creator God, I am a jealous God, that says you can eat off this tree. That's why you, that, that alone tells you this, this Kabbalah shit is bullshit. In the Bible, the Demiurge or, or this creator God, Jehovah, Yahweh, says, you can eat all the fruit you want off the tree of life. Do not eat off the tree of knowledge, which is the dark, which is the calypso. It's quite simple. The, the cipher that gets you to the behind the tree is called the doth, which means knowledge. And it says, do not eat off the tree of knowledge. You will become a god like him. Ain't no, ain't no more to that. 
ain't, you ain't got it, ain't really no figuring out to that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. You know, ain't, ain't I appreciate it. Out to that. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem, bro. All right, let's lines. Let's go to area code four zero four. Four zero four, you on the air. Um, hello, gentlemen, brother Panic. Thank you. You're you're bringing it tonight. Um, I'm gonna try yeah, to say black, my black. question as intelligently as possible. So bear with me. Um, I listened right, to um, brother Valentine's lecture. He did an excellent lecture on Kabbalah as well, and he put um, the Who's diagram. That? Uh, brother Valentine, Phil Valentine. Oh, okay. Uh huh. Um, and he put a um, the uh, tree of knowledge on the board, and he broke everything down with the numbers and explained how it was the chakras. But what was different mm-hmm. with him? He kind of um, also finished the puzzle per se um, to the tree of knowledge, where he put like this gateway to me, which looked like the, the five eight purse. And he said the thing with the Kabbalah dudes, they'll share with folks what's inside the tree of knowledge, but they really don't talk about the other sides of it or the complete picture. Yeah. And his take on yeah, it was because they can't F with that per se because they don't have that melanin. So that complete picture, which yes, is the entire gateway, that, we can F with it, correct. but they can't. Okay. Okay, that, so I just that's want to absolutely take on correct. That. That's absolutely correct because the the clip off is your world. They they were born in this world. They are a product of this illusion. They are not from the original source. So us being out connection is because we're from the original source. Like Aline was telling the sister about the DNA. She'll mm-hmm. always be straight and always be able to tap in because what's in her DNA is is non-changeable. You can't change it just without knowing. It's just you have to find a methodology for tapping in. Some may be easier, some may be harder, and your 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 challenge may be different, but you are from that source. So what what Brother Phil is talking about is the people who are of that source are able to deal with it. Now, understand this as well, that a lot of information about all magical systems, not just Kabbalah, has been stripped, taken away, and lost. So not only are we getting fragments of everything that we're dealing with, um, we have to add a, a melanated, creative edge to, to fill in the blanks. And them as a regular human thing, they're not creative, you know what I'm saying? They're just figuring out how to make rap songs. You, you get what I'm saying? This shit is about 40 years old for us. And they right. just starting to learn how to rap. So they're so far behind in everything they do. It, it, Kabbalistically, not getting now. Understand this. They are those who try. Usually the ones who try are in those groups. Because they're not going to do it individually. They'll, they'll join like the OTO and the ATA and the ITI. And it'll be a group setting because they need that much energy to energy accomplish to do it. it. And, hmm. Right, to do it. And then they're still not accomplishing shit. See, McGregor Mathers and uh, Crowley, um, they decoded and named and defined 72 of the Go- Goatic energies or the Goatia. But they never were able to tap into it. Crowley really didn't get shit done. In fact, one of his biggest deals was he talked to a deity called Lamb. Lamb eventually became that 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 alien with the big head, uh, uh-huh. uh, you know that that template that didn't exist until Crowley drew a picture of that. Didn't exist nowhere on TV. And what he said was he was doing rituals and made contact with a, with Lamb. And this was how Horace looked. Now, I know this to be true because I made the same contact before I knew who Lamb was. Um, I had an ex-girlfriend, and all these babies used to always come when we used to spend the night. And she was one of the craziest places where I used to have these lucid dreams. 
And this little <laughs> monster looking dirty baby was there and I'm talking to this shit. And I'm like, You need anything? And I don't need anything. And um, you know, it took me three days to realize that shit was lamb. So then I went and looked up lamb. I was talking to myself, oh, that was that dude, you know, went and did the work and blah 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 blah. And found out when Crowley did it, he got so shook that he said he's going to shut that shit down. And wow. L. Ron Hubbard and the other dude that did the jet fuel was like, fuck that, we're going to do it. And they was coming up with these Babylonia rights and all that. Crowley threw them out the OTO. One dude died, and L. Ron Hubbard went on to make uh, Dianetics and Scientology. And, um, and, and uh, what's his name? And all of them was doing that same Babylonia shit. And basically know how to make a deity come through the womb. They, Tom Cruise and them was doing it with his daughter, um, invoking a deity through the womb. And Crowley was like, shut that shit down. When you see Crowley's documentary, all his shit failed. The, the best thing he got out of all the shit that he did was, uh, was um, the Book of the Law. <laughs> The book wow. of the law. Well, and okay. she's like, somebody said, so panic saying Horace is basically a great. What did I just goddamn say? I say, this is really all Crowley's that. work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. This is all Crowley's work. You ain't got shit to do. Go back to Facebook. And somebody keeps asking about fucking Lucifer. What the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Go away with this bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Well, brother, you bring uh, look, it Lucifer, tonight. Lucifer is 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 a polarity. Ain't no man named Lucifer like there ain't no man named Jesus. They're trying to define two different polarities. Yep. They're trying to find two different polarities. And, and like, it, it, it's a concept. Just study the concept. Read a book, Cursey Graves, the biography of Satan. Um, That's good enough. Read Cursey Graves' book. The bi- biography of Satan. We go through everything Satan. You'll find this shit out so fucking easy. You know what I'm saying? It's not even worth typing all of that shit. You know what I'm saying? All you have to do is type on Amazon for three seconds and find all of this shit. You'll find it. Um, you'll find this shit for a PDF for free. It's the biography of Satan. All right. Well, th- thank, thank you, you so much, question, brother. Too. I just have yeah, two more that, points, that, and I'm it's a compliment. It's a compliment to you. Um, you did a something on YouTube about the Monkey King, and I, I mm, listened okay. to that, got the concept behind it. I went and bought three monkeys, and um, Good. I just had the weirdest thing happen to me. I went to sleep and had monkeys jumping at me. So that was the first thing. Oh, yeah, then, 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 that's Hanneman, boy. Get with that shit. There's a book. Hold on, let me get it for you right now. Yeah, this is that, that tripped me uh, out, and I, it um, took me a while to figure it out. I'm like, why the hell are monkeys jumping at me in my dream? And then I remembered. I'm like, oh, that lecture, and then I put the monkeys on my altar. That's what it is. Get a book called Hanneman, an Introduction by Dev Duck Patniak, D-E-V-D-U-T-T, and his last name is... P A T T A N A I K. He goes through the whole Ramayana, which is the Hanuman story, basically. And he does okay. it, he does it simple, you know what I mean? Makes it easy and simple, and um, and it's actually a good, easy read. Okay. But um, right, yeah, if that's happening, that means that Hanuman's energy is is happening around you, and that's a good look because okay. um. And- Hanneman is like a protector. So whatever you're doing, you must be doing something right. Okay, and then the last thing, you gave a ritual out about Ganesh and putting it in the water and um, Mm -hmm. cumin to generate some money. And five days, Mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting this money, and it it happened. So um, I'm going to try to get with Mm -hmm. the next class because I'm hearing great things about it and you go through the ritual, so I'm going to try to get on the next schedule. So, Excellent. Um, Excellent. Thank you we'll for all here. that you do. I, I truly appreciate Good. it. And um, you no too, problem. brother. Glad to help. And I'll get off the phone and let everybody else talk. Thank you. All right. Cool.
Nice talking to you, sis. All right, let's go back to the phone lines. We got area code 773. Area code 773, you're on the line. Hey, what's going on? Good show. What's going on, Panic? What's up, babe? All right. Quick question. Uh, Panic, you was going in about the um, Cipherus, and you say uh, at the bottom, Mm -hmm. at the 10, you start off with uh, Mount Kuf, then it's uh, the moon, then it's the sun. Now, what did you say the Mm dolphin was, the daff? Well, the Dolph is a hidden cipher. Technically, no, no, I know, I know what it is. I know what it is. But where is it loca- located? In between the Ketha and the, uh, the Tipra? Ketha and Tipra. <laughs> um, most trees, you'll they won't show it. Very few trees they'll show it because technically it's behind the tree. So its location, it, there's three poles. And starting at the bottom, it's 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 one, two, three, four. And three on the side and three on the other side. And okay. so in most studies, they'll tell you you have to go the straight path because the ones on the side are like Mercury, Mars, Jupiter, and Venus, which have their own energies. But it's kind of like you're getting caught up in that. So the, the straight path is actually Earth, Moon, which represents the astral, the sun, which represents the Christ energy, and technically Kepha, which represents after Christ you go home. But okay, they, now, but, now but see, the I, common I was thing doing is, some reading. common thing is the common thing is um, what people don't say is you become Darth before you go home. That's what happened in Star Wars. Jedi, you're actually Christ. You're saving the energy. You're saving the world. And but he didn't go to heaven. He went through the dark side, then went to heaven, which it represents Darth. But most trees they'll just have you going. You you go from Earth to the astral, which means you're dreaming or whatever. Then you become a Christ, which is Tifra. Then you go, become Ketha, which is home or the adept. But Darth is okay. in between that, which they'll show as a dotted Tifra, because they're trying to tell you okay. don't fall into the abyss. That's 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 okay. the whole message. That's the abyss. Don't fall in the abyss. That in in Masonic shit is called crossing of the sand. You don't want to fall in, a, oh. and you need this camel. The path to that is called Gimel, which is a camel, which means you're riding through the desert or the void. So you need a camel to get past the Dov. Okay, we're not worried 13, about that. We're trying fan, to bro. become Darth Vader. Say again. Thirteenth path, right? That, coming out of Tifra, right? Uh, it, it could be the number. You know what I'm saying it, it might be the number. Yeah, yeah, that's that's thirteen. That's what I'm looking at. It says thirteen, and you know what it says? It corresponds well, to the moon. Yeah, I'm sure of it. I mean, like I said, it's called path working. So whatever path, it's going to be a name. It's going to be a, a energy. It's going to be something. You get what I'm saying? Okay. So when when you get this in a day and a birthday, they they make it to a path. These 22 paths represent the 22 trump cards on um, the uh, tarot, you know what I'm saying? So it, it, every one of them has a story. It just, like I said, it depends on how much you want to get into it. I will tell you this. Every single person I know who's, who, who deals with spirits, some spirit has told them at one point, do not fuck with Kabbalah. It is nothing more than a matrix. Every... All right. Sifra is a Malkuth. So it's dimension after dimension after dimension. You'll get caught up in that shit and forget it. Well, basically, it. the past you know is just going back into the soul, right? Go, getting back into the self. Well, they, what it is is they point. They say that the tree of life is a diaphragm of the universe and the soul. And there's four levels in your soul. So they're looking at the Kabbalistic tree of life as a picture of your soul, as your soul decoded, which I don't believe to be the case. It's the illusion. Um, it's your interpretation of, of, of a soul just because this place is the illusion. If you, The Kalipov would probably be closer to your soul if you were able to actually understand the soul. You get what I'm saying? So in, a, in an attempt to try to... to 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 uh, describe the soul, 
They'll tell you about the four worlds, the four cipheras, how the how the worlds interface and break down, how how the soul could be on different levels. For instance, there's four worlds. The first world is the world of instinct. Second world is the world of intelligence. The third world is the world of uh, intuition, and the fourth world is the world of knowing. So most women tap into the world of knowing, like they could wake up 4 a.m. and be like, something's happening to my son, or something happened to my son, they'll just wake up. They said that's the world of knowing. Um, of okay. course, uh, we're at the uh, supposed to be at the world of intuition, which is the third level of the soul, which is you're able to do magic. The second level is the where most people are, the world of intelligence. And the third level is nothing but a bunch of inmates. Who what you know what you say motherfucker that type of thing you know what I'm saying okay 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 got another another quick question now I know last week mm-hmm. uh, well week before last you was talking about the imagination and how it's uh, connected to the subconscious now since I've been getting uh, mm-hmm. more and more conscious I've been realizing like if I tell it like a little white lie it comes true mm-hmm. now is that dealing with the imagination and the subconscious right yeah well your words magnetize, thoughts magnetize what you want. So if you're exercising the area of of magnetism with your mind, then that's what's going to happen. So whatever you're doing, you're doing it correct. Um, see, the whole idea of is is your belief. You know what I mean? Believe to achieve. So if, if you uh, now putting yourself in a position where you believe your words mean something. The word abracadabra means some shit like let my words be so or something like that. Amen means, you know, so be it. We, these type of words, because they understood the word was God, and, and the word was the, your word was the word of God. You get what I'm saying? So they understood that in your words you can pull whatever you want. So, But because we don't think that way anymore, it doesn't happen. We just think things are random. So once you start focusing your thoughts and get out the randomness of your thoughts, and um, that's the whole idea of magic. That's the whole idea of sharp tuning and fine tuning your thoughts, meditation, breathing, and all of these techniques. All the whole idea of that is so your thoughts are sharp like a laser, and so as a reaction, whatever you speak will start to happen. I mean, niggas okay. do that anyway. Niggas know that. That's why niggas be like, oh, God bless the dead once they say this and that. And you say some shit, like, let me stop talking about that shit. You know what I'm saying? Because, you, right. you know, you kind of know. You kind of know your words, uh, you know, bring, uh, can, can do damage or bring reality. But So all it means is your shit is working. Okay, okay. All right, appreciate it, appreciate it. Thanks a lot. No problem, boss. Right. All right. Remember, um, people who paid for class, I'm going to call you all this week. We're about to start. Um, If you don't know, um, I teach classes, and um, I'm actually starting to get to the bottom of the barrel. Some real scavengers are starting to call, so I need the people who are serious to call. Um, Because, you know, most of the people who are serious took the class already, let me see. Somebody keeps bothering me. Fucking this Lucifer shit and Enoch shit. Look, stop asking me that. I'm not going to answer that. Somebody keeps yeah. texting me about fucking Enoch. I'm not answering that shit. I don't. I don't <laughs> read the book. Read the book. <laughs> it's like the autobiography of Satan. That's where you're going to get all of that shit. Fucking talking about like Enoch like it was a real dude. Did Enoch do that? Who the fuck? <laughs> Fucking nobody named Enoch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> There's a nigga named Enoch cut my lawn. You know what I'm saying? I ask him when he come around. So, um, <laughs> so um, class is gonna start this week, and um, and uh, you know, those if you don't like, I need serious people. I, you know, people playing around like so, somebody paid for a class. Then, then cancel the class because I didn't come on a lean show last week. Like, what the fuck you think I died or some shit? It's like, like, come on, this is, this is ridiculous. This is a waste of time. 
So, um, so you know, if you're serious about this class, I don't, I, I don't even want that person in my class. If you're serious about the class, I'm, I'm interested in teaching serious people some shit. This is life changing shit that I teach. This ain't no fun eBay shit. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all losing track of who the fuck y'all fucking with. Y'all, y'all, y'all hitting me up like it's eBay. You're sending me fucking emails that takes like fucking 20 minutes to read about fucking nothing. Why there holes in your sheets and all the rest of that. Enough of that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to answer it. Don't even waste your time. Well, I'm interested, if you're going to ask a question, something that's going to be changed, something that's going to change and something that's going to, something that you can't find out yourself. Or, give me something. You know what I'm saying? I want to hear rants about how you, your fucking story on how you feel about white people. I have enough email. I don't even feel like answering the ones that I have now. So, you know what I mean? Don't even waste your time. I don't. I know there's a lot of new people. You better listen to my old shows because, you know, I've been real nice lately. But you better listen to my old shows. I'm going to start getting really, I'm going to start getting funky again. So stop sending me dumbass emails. I don't, I don't give a fuck if you didn't take your medicine or what medicine you should take. I just don't give a fuck. This shit is all about science and study. If you're not willing to study and do your own science, I'm not willing to do it for you. I'm going to tell you that right now. Well, again, we're about to start classes. You interested in, interested in classes, send me an email, panicpack at hotmail.com. If you're flirting with it, leave me the fuck alone. Of course, there's herb packs. The book is coming soon. We got baths, all that stuff that you need to help you transform. This is not just for me. This is shit that will help you transform. This herb pack is for your pineal gland. This herb pack will help you go to the next level. I get email after email of people saying what this shit has done to change their life. Everything from not smoking to make your fucking urine yellow. Whatever the fuck it is you're trying to do, this shit does it. You get what I'm saying? This shit does it. You know what I'm saying? If you want Bobby updates, go to, go to my group, join up, and you'll find out all the updates you need to find out. So, again, panicpack at hotmail.com. Serious inquiries only. I don't I, 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 I'm ready to go back to fucking work. I'm so tired of you niggas. I ain't going to lie. So, stop wasting my time with all of these bullshit damn stories and Goddamn scams and schemes. I'm I'm not paying attention to none of that. I read a line of that shit and delete it. I'm gonna start. What I'm gonna start doing is when you send me these goddamn bullshit emails, start putting them up in my group with your fucking with your with your goddamn email in there. So I guess that'll make y'all niggas think niggas start emailing you on that bullshit. So let's get it together. We ain't, um, there's no time to be playing around anymore. Let's stop playing around. Fucking goddamn Facebook, goddamn playground shit. Let's get serious, get down to some work. You know what I'm saying? I know it's in you, you know what I'm saying? But ask two hours about goddamn Lucifer, some shit that you can find out for free. Let's get it together. I don't know. There's more questions we could do that. I mean, Yeah. Panic. Yeah, if there's more questions. Yeah. You hear me? Yeah. Yes. You can pa- panic for real, you can hear me right now. Yeah, who's this? Yo, this is I God. I can't believe this nigga I leave just put me through. I've been live on the air the whole time. You stupid. Listen, I'm back I'm glad you back. Thank you, my nigga, from the bottom of my heart, yo, for for real. Thank you. The panic pack works. These niggas is on some bullshit, but the shit works, my nigga. I flipped my whole shit good. after the panic pack about three years ago, nigga. You you that good. nigga and Feeling niggas good. need to really that's what's up. Yeah, hey, nah, that's for real. That's what that's kills real, me the bro. most. You the shit though. That's what kills me the most. The shit worked. You know what I'm saying? I can see if the shit wasn't working or it was half assed, this shit changed lives. And I'm trying to offer it to motherfuckers. Nigga. Motherfuckers just hit me like it's eBay. Some, some nigga just returned the sender. I'm sitting there like, <laughs> listen, I'm listen, getting mailed back, back and shit, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying I, like, I you remember, cut those, your nose to spike your face, I should blow his fucking name up. And listen to this shit for free all day, I'm sure. You're probably in here now. 
Yeah, this shit works, I'm man. Saying. I remember you was um, I had a, I had a, well, really, I had more of a, a statement. I've been working with the tarot lately, and you funny you said the book of the law. I got this shit sitting on my desk right here, and um, mm-hmm. I was fucking with the tarot, but the first time, like a OTO, a old school old cracker OTO chick gave me a deck, just gave it to me on some shit, and she handed it to me, and I dropped them. The cards was big as fuck, right? And um, the fucking mm-hmm. f- card that fell out was the Hierophant, right? Mm-hmm. So um, I first, I, and then I opened the book that she gave me because she gave me the book to go along with it, the Book of Toss with Tahuti on the cover. Mm-hmm. And I got a Tahuti statue in my crib. I been had it, and she just gave this shit to me out the blue. I was like, damn. Mm-hmm. So I right, just, man, listen, listen. The, ta- the deck been on point. The readings I've been doing readings just on some whim shit, but I keep on popping Excellent. up into the fucking Hierophant. So I was like, what the fuck? So I, I did this research on the Hierophant, and I looked at the, look at where it was on the chart. The shit was at, uh, what's this shit again? Chakma. It was actually, all right, all this to say that um, your shit work be, and people need to do the work when they get the messages and the fucking signs. And stop running around and asking everybody, what does this mean and what does that mean? And all right, shit. The, you right, the signs right, you you know, right. Right, it's Every there for you. Day. It's your shit. It's not mine. This is your shit. So I don't have the like the damn copyright on it. Motherfuckers could tap into this shit easy, but they so religified, so religified that they want somebody to tell them. That's right. They that's they want to fucking they these niggas these niggas need a leader when they're supposed to be the fucking leader in their own communities exactly. and their own household. And they're looking for some other nigga to tell them what to do and do their own shit. Right. And um, I'm just, I, I, for real, man, I love this dark side shit because it allowed me to explore my real, my, my real true self. But the fucked up part is that I don't want to murk these niggas, like really milk them because they want a leader so bad you could juice their ass up on any fucking thing. Right. That's, you could sell that's them the all kind of If I wanted to be... If I wanted to be that right. dude, oh my goodness! You oh my I know, goodness. son. I know, son. It's like that, I was, that's the listen, honestly, part. for real, panic. I stopped listening to you because I felt like you got sore for a minute. You stopped bashing on niggas. I was like, you need yeah, to bash like, on these niggas I, some I'm more because they are nice to niggas. Yeah, it's like it's almost not worth it. You know what I'm saying? Before, like, I was whipping motherfuckers in the shade because motherfuckers was going somewhere. Now niggas is yeah, uh, man. niggas on YouTube themselves to fucking nowhere, niggas. <laughs> Patty, what are you listen, listen. for? What's ice for? Like, why is water wet? Like, nah, nigga, y'all think it need to come harder, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, word. I'm going I'm to beat my own chest real quick, Panic, and this is really only a testament to really what you uh, opened up in me, so I'm going to just tell you what I did. Like, I knew the, the Trayvon Martin shit was a mass ritual, right? So um, right. I did some reverse shit. I did a reverse ritual during that shit, and I channeled, I tried to channel, well, I did, I successfully channeled his energy, and um, he wanted me mm-hmm. to go at the crackers, he said he ain't even fuck with white people like that at all, and he was trying to bang on that nigga, <laughs> so, so uh, I wrote a right. song that was right. real rah-rah, that was real rah-rah, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, and then... I was in that moment, right, so I started a petition because I was on all of this black, listen, watching all the old slave getting beat, all of that shit. Just it had me on some other shit, right? So I started a petition to change the name of a school here in Jacksonville that was named after the first leader of the Klan. And in like three months, the shit got uh, 177,000 signatures, and they fucking changed the name. I did that shit on some, on some literal... Reverse ritual shit. So they took the slave that he was named was Nathan B. Forrest. They took his name off the fucking mm-hmm. school and they changed it to West Side High. These crackers is mad as hell, B. And the shit was funny. Shit. And I did that's, it on some reverse fun ritual me, shit. Too. That's what I'm saying. That's you can play with it, but me, if I'm gonna play with it, I ain't gonna bash on my niggas and milk my people. But at the same time, right. Niggas got to eat, you know what I'm saying, for they fucking work. Because right. you do all of this work, and you really only want to look out for your fucking peoples. And niggas don't even want to break right. bread no kind of way or show no kind of fucking support for the work that niggas put in. You know what I'm saying? So I commend you. Props to you, B. It's 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 um it's, it's good to, to um know that your shit works. And I'm a success story. I'm a follower from good. day one. Glad, glad and that um, you that glad nigga, P. Doing work, kid. If any, anything, I'm glad to see anybody do anything, kid. 
Besides just ask questions and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, ask fucking questions. questions all like, the you time. can answer as soon yourself. <laughs> I mean, I, I get the question concept, but some of these questions could be answered yourself with a little bit of a little bit of elbow grease. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, I don't hear. I I, I hear people <sighs> saying panic. What's the answer? Instead of saying panic, where can I go to find this out? That's a di- that's a whole right. different energy. If somebody's right. asking me, well, I want to find out about Lucifer. What could I do next? You know what I'm saying? Boom. Then right. then we could talk. You're like, what does that mean? I don't fucking no, I don't care. You know, this shit about I don't even care about. You know what I'm saying? If you care about it so much, then that's 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 then what you your should, energy. You should care about it enough to do the fucking work to find out what it means. Right. Of you should care about it enough. Right. You should care about it enough. Right. To at least go to fucking Google. You know what I'm saying? Right. It'll... You care about it enough to do that. You know what I'm saying? I, I and I get it. Sometimes, sometimes it's a right. Like. We're dealing with a spe- specific subject here. You know what I'm saying? What does mm-hmm. that got to do with, with what we're talking about? Like, if we're going to question some shit, let's deal with what we're dealing with. You know what I'm saying? Like, ask Yeah, me, man. How do you make ice after you hear all this shit about the Calypso? Well, how do you make ice? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is yeah, the I, I fuck, I, Yeah. Who, who invented oranges? Like I, mean, I don't fucking know. What I'm saying Google that shit. Who does it, who's you the first put, man uh, to eat grapes? The, 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 who's the, the first shit that man? took me out? That who, it, who it was now, always lady? on some um, knowledge shit. People wanted people wanted to know, but they don't want to. They don't want to do the work. Um, and when you tell somebody to figure out the problem for themselves, they get mad at you like you ain't being a good enough teacher. You know what I'm saying? Right. So uh, it's a uh, balance to that, and that's what. But that's what the hierophant card is, man. I pulled that shit this morning, and that's what it means. It actually means the fucking teacher, the nigga that get on there, um, the priest, uh, the dignitary. I got the book. It's from it's they had it in the game section in the fucking pawn shop, b. It was two dollars, man. It's the Crowley Tarot, and mm-hmm. it's the book uh, by a what is it? Uh, Ar- Akron, Hajo, and Basniff, and it breaks down every fucking card mm-hmm. in the deck. It gives out all of the fucking. The Hebrew letter it comes from, the fucking position in the mm. in the tree of life, the number, the Sabbath, the ritual associated with each card, and the Crowley Tarot deck. So um, that shit was Excellent. dope. Excellent. When I looked up the shit on the on the Hierophant, I knew that that you know being a being somebody out there to speak to people is some something a little bit different. You got to do some shit. So everybody ain't called to do exactly what you're doing right now, and what a lot of people see themselves doing, but they don't have the ability to. Um, to uh, teach nobody nothing because niggas are still all learning our damn selves. So right. You, you, well, I mean, I, you know, I just you, wish, I understand, because you know, we call, we, we ask for questions, but we got to uh, also be able, willing to take the initiative as studiers to, uh, right. to, we need to understand the level of questioning we're asking and in the angle of how we're asking these questions. Are we asking mm-hmm. these questions to further our research, or are we asking these questions um, because we refuse to research? That's really what, that's what it comes down right. to. So what I hear is right. a lot of we, we're asking questions because we refuse to research. We want a free, I, cheap, easy answer. So Right, that's why motherfuckers come for a, a tarot card reading. Work, and you tell people who are doing work, and when they ask qu- certain questions, you can tell it's to further their work. You could tell they may have hit either a stumbling block or they may have, or they want to further something that they're doing. And that's what we, in my opinion, that's what I'm here for, to be, to help you along the way if I've gone through it. Um, advice based upon someone who considers themselves a strong researcher. And other than that, um, but I don't want to control your life. If I want to control your life, I need to come up with more money then. If you need me to control your Straight life, up. you need to come up with more money then. Straight and that, and that's, up. That's what's My real. goodness. If you want me to control your life, you need to come up with more money then. Because I'm already, I have enough trouble with my fucking stepsons. So if you want me to control <laughs> your life, you're going to have to, you're going to have to come harder than a fucking herb pack. But the good news Straight is up, I don't want to control your life. I want to empower you. So Yo, I'm Pat, talking to you like this. So you book, though. empower yourself. 
three um the book, somebody my nigga. do um finishing up the some is finishing up the editing now. So um she just sent me a chapter. We got two more chapters, then it's gonna go uh to uh formatting and then um that's it, I'm putting it out. I I, I is at the point now I can't wait to get this fucking book out because I'm tired of everything the fuck else. <laughs> so it's at a point now. It's all about this fucking book. That may be my exit strategy in this motherfucker. I'm telling you. Hell yeah. I know like, what you're uh, saying about you You, you, you got to go through DOS to get out, man. I always felt like this was my last time to be on this trip through this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? I always felt like the yeah. Christ. I always felt my mother name was Mary. When I was little, so um, you know, I, I always felt like I was Jesus, my damn self. You know what I'm saying? And I had to go do this no shit. No doubt, my so I, 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 right. I, right, I had to go do this shit, my damn self. So it was, I felt like um, I felt real connected to everything you were saying, and 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 it's not just a feeling; it's more of a, when you translate that shit into action, B. And um, I, right. I think everybody right. would be best best suited. To try to do some shit If it's just lighting a fucking candle Or yeah, talking a rock oh, around man. Saying over that, to that's Allah the funniest shit. Oh. I was going to say That's the funniest shit That um, is probably the greatest feeling in the world To have a conscious victory I've never felt nothing more exhilarating Than doing Hell something yeah. And finding something out consciously On my own Right, not, 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 right. Not This one or that one said That's the whole point of this shit You know what I'm saying I, and, and I would hate to be telling motherfuckers shit just to uh, rob people of of the process. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's right. like, you. This but, is your path. You came down here. What the fuck are you come down here for? To listen to me all day? You came to hear, share, <laughs> and then do your own shit. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you hey, right. That's can, a can, big I ask, can I ask you one of the bullshit questions, though? Panic, for real. Yeah, or if yeah. Eileen is on, or anybody can answer this question. It's a bullshit ass question, but I haven't been able to find a lot on it. Is what was Tahuti's relationship with my eye? I mean, I could look on the metaphysical that, and that see that um, the written law uh, versus you know the uh, more higher law with going on with Tahuti. Well, no, 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 like I mean, the, no, the no, no, this way, Tahuti represents thought, and she represents the um, the balance of the left and right brain. So. Um, so it represents balancing thought, the left and right brain. So they are marriage. They are. They are actually, so they are, that's they, one of his indeed concepts. they are married because that's that's the other statue yeah, that I that right. I one of and his I, concepts, listen so I come up on he's all my also statues. Married to all my, mm-hmm. Who? Yeah, he's also married to Sashet. Yeah, which I mean, it's, it's not holy matrimony like. They're talking about like like niggas they, think about it in the church, but that you know just, he fuck with her. Right, you just just talking about how how their union is. So Tahuti is just another version of Osiris, just the intellectual version of Osiris. In fact, they said um, the attributes of Set was actually Tahuti, Anubis, and um, Osiris. Later, they all broken up into those three. So they're all pretty much the same kind of deity. You know what I'm saying? It's just more inference on different aspects of that. So the intelligence and men is another one, the sexual aspect. And um, so Tahuti and Mahad are married. I, I can't remember any of their mythologies. Any like any like any of the like the like the uh, bullshit story or like a movie or something that would show that relationship and correlation where you could catch it, like how you do the breakdowns. Or and I was listening to you on the. I was fucking yeah, with you. I can't, remember, I any, I can't you. remember. I can't remember any mythologies where they they do a whole story, but I'm sure there's one. I'm just forgetting it. But Why? That's, some that's of the what first I couldn't find nothing on that. I'm telling you, I was looking for that shit. I was. Just, Tossing it out there if anybody knew that shit. But I put the link up to where in in the chat room to where I changed the name of the damn school and I put, there's my picture and everything, my Facebook and all of that shit. We was in here with meetings and each school board voted on the shit. It's motherfucking. It was niggas out here dancing around with damn Confederate flags on and Confederate uniforms, begging them niggas to keep the name of the cracker name on the school. That's that's the fucking day and time we in right now, B. That's, That's the day and time we're in right now. So so we got to get out here, and if we're going to be on our shit, it's going to manifest through us, but we're going to have to do something in the community to help the fucking community out because it's about oh, to fucking go down. They're selling. Say it. 
It's almost Teddy Teddy Richmond. Richmond? That's you? Yeah, yeah. You 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 oh, clocked me? Oh, you clocked me. Yeah, I'm I guard yeah. in the chat room, man. Don't do me like that, nigga. I'm oh, okay. I guard in the chat room fucking with y'all. Oh. I didn't know that was you. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah that, your voice that was me. I fucked with you. From... Your voice sound mad different. From my picture, from right? Name. Yeah. From my picture, oh, okay, I know, right, up. nigga. I know. Don't judge me, though. That's what's up. But yeah, I put hey, this that's yeah, that shit, that shit went that they shit went down. They're doing so, something, man. They're doing something. You know what yeah, I mean? that's that was all a reverse yeah, ritual, man. man. That was all of because I, I, I knew the, I knew they was gonna let this nigga get off because they testing the waters on niggas because they want to make sure niggas don't do no uprising. They've been so scared about a fucking uprising. They think everybody trying to. That's why they switch rap and all that shit. Niggas scared about a fucking right. uprising that we niggas gonna tear this bitch up. And niggas is so fucking zombified that that shit is yeah, out. Niggas is zombified, P. Yeah, they got Word the, is fine. Uh, they I don't got know what the, they doing uh, nowhere else, but. They got the uh, uh, the infrastructure for a riot, you know what I'm saying? Nigga president and all that shit, so. And, and the goddamn right, KKK. They want it. They want niggas to do it. They're edging them on. Niggas is scared. Because they know. <laughs> They know they ain't about that life, man. We about to, we we supposed to hug motherfuckers, man. We they edging niggas on the fight, same way they did Japan, nigga. They on some bullshit. But fuck this fact, that's not even really what I was on here to talk about. I was on here to to just give you props and let you know. And I know you already know you don't need nobody to co-sign me. Shit, that shit works. To hear to let me know shit is still on point. If shit is failing, you need to let me know. I'm glad the shit is working for you. Oh, yeah, you know I'm saying man. glad this shit is working for you. I say, you know, everybody need to get get in, put their sh- you know, put their work in. You know what I'm saying? Put mm-hmm. that work in. You say the lean still post? I, I I think that nigga been dropped. To be honest, and he went before. Like you started talking, I heard my phone go unmute. I started saying something, but you was building. So I didn't want to do nothing, you know what I'm saying? And then I just said, "Fuck it, I'm gonna say something." And nigga, and I was on the line and it's doing some mental shit. <laughs> nigga, my shit know, works, saying, nigga. He, I don't even know. I'm, that, I'm the other host of the show now. We about to do the takeover, nigga. Dickhead Radio. <laughs> Yo, what's up to my man? DJ Full Moon. Yeah, oh God, you back, Ali? <laughs> Yeah, I'm here. All right, we getting ready to go oh, okay. to the phone right. line. Zero seven six zero. You on the line? How you doing, brother? Uh, Panic. Hey, peace. How you doing, brother Lane? Peace and love. Peace, peace. and love. Right. I just had a question for uh, brother uh, Panic. I want to know when you gonna do another lecture uh, in Atlanta and bring brother Lane, man. That's a good question. Uh, if uh, that's a good question. I'm glad you brought it up. If y'all could show me that y'all want to do it, because um, I'm willing to do it any time. But Liam is always welcome here, so that's not an issue. We have guest rooms, so that's not an issue. And Liam knows how to get down here. Um, and I found a spot, but I, if people gonna, no one's hit me up like they want to do it. I have to get that feedback. Like y'all gonna actually come out? Because I'm not gonna do uh, webinar this time. We need people okay. to show up. It ain't like it's not. Uh, um, who who's this? This is brother uh, Larry, brother who's L. Okay, okay. Um, I was gonna say. Uh, I, I, don't I know came if, to the if, I came to the lesson with uh, Wayne Tyler and brother Lane before and everything. And, right. You know, it really see, changed my you life. See, they, 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 you know, you see how it was the first time with the Lane, and you yeah, know, that's because a lot of people wanted to see it was the first movement. The second yeah. one, it wasn't as many people. Not Mercury's in retrograde. <laughs> I'm gonna say yeah. that, but I did a yeah. lot. But a lot of people show up on the webinar, so it wasn't. A, it was still actually a lot. A lot of people there, but but it really only works out if people are there buying herb packs. Then it's worth it because everybody came to the door bought herb packs, and that's really where I was able to pay a lien and pay for the place. So this, it was like just coming out of my pocket. With Wayne, which was still okay, but still, you know what I mean. So it's just a matter of I'm, I'm so interested in that. It's just a matter of 
knowing that there's going to be enough people to show up. Because, you know, this is not my town. If this was New York, we have a whole different conversation. I know where to go give out flyers. But I'll tell you this, during Wayne, not one person, I gave out thousands of flyers. Not one motherfucker with a flyer showed up. Everybody was from the goddamn radio. To my high yeah, panic. From uh, Miss Blue so show. Nobody, nobody, yeah, nobody showed up. Uh-huh. We got the numbers here. But like I said, it's a matter of people getting down to Atlanta. So if it's a matter of people getting down to Atlanta, they're not going to come um, until it gets a little, maybe next month, when it gets a little bit warmer. Down yeah, here. yeah. Because this little yeah. bit of snow got everybody fogged up down here. It's almost like niggas spilled a cup of ice and, and the whole fucking city shut down. Like niggas spilled a cup of ice and like, oh, hey, nobody can go to school. I'm sitting out there like, I'm looking out the window going, y'all niggas ain't serious. Niggas like, yo, we are fucked. It's like, it's a parking lot. I'm like, nigga, I can't even make a decent snowball out this son of a bitch. When niggas is fucked up, they ain't used to no kind of shit like this. So, if exactly. ain't nothing happening, you can't do it during this stuff. But I'm real interested in that. You know what I'm saying? That was probably one of the best lectures in a while. You know what I'm saying? I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. It changed, it changed my life. Uh, yeah, yeah, lean shit is what. Yeah, lean drop the side. Lean drop the side. Fire, fire, you know what I'm saying? And he went for out a long time. And so this spot is actually better. It was, it was less, a little bit bigger. And um, and I think we could rock in there for a little bit as long as we want, even though shit, eight hours is a long fucking time. So, yeah, um, yeah. It was, it was a good spot for a good price, and you know I'm sure it's still available. But it's a matter of me knowing that there's a a movement. So if y'all want to lean, just send me an email. Send me an email and say, look, I'm willing to come. I'm willing to come. I get enough people who email, then I'm gonna set it up. And I would definitely love to do a lecture with a lean. We were just talking about that the other day, as a matter of fact, because uh, he did the last le- lecture. He hung out at the crib. She was like living in a hippie commune, yo. So Khadija was like, yo, man, when the lean and them coming back, man? It was, they, we was chilling. Or we was cooking out and all that shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Later on when the lean left, my deck caught on fire, you know what I'm saying? Damn. Damn. <laughs> it was cooking out. I went upstairs, you know what I'm saying? Fucking shit was on fire. Sean King Cook came upstairs and Yo, Lord, yo, your deck's on fire. <laughs> like, motherfucker, you, you'd be a little bit more excited than that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Big hole in my shit. You know what I'm saying? I had to get the, this shit was real pathetic. So I'm like, damn, you, you saved my life, son. I owe you absolutely nothing. Thank you for that. Now I got to <laughs> stay on this motherfucker. Sell her pack, <laughs> son of a bitch. So, like, uh, anyway, uh, you know, so, yeah, we was chilling, so I would definitely love to do that again. I appreciate it, brother. I appreciate you know, y'all work, man. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, we'll we'll see if I get enough feedback. I'm I'm with it. And even if I don't, I'm a, I'm, maybe I'm going to try something. If I don't get enough feedback, I'm going to definitely try something when it starts getting warmer. Because they have a radio station out here, and I know a few people that work on it. So it's about going on that radio show, those radio shows. So I could do that. Lean could do that. So we'll see. But it's something I definitely want to do. Okay, and I play my role and just try to motivate the people for them. And, yeah, you know, you know, people, if you could do that, you know what I'm saying, then you know, we'll work something out and figure something out and have you connected, you know, in some sort of way if you can make something happen. Okay, I appreciate it, brother. Figure something up. All, All right, right, brother. Peace. All right, we got area code 347. Area code 347, you're on the line. Peace, peace. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, peace. You on? Yes, you're on the line, brother. Peace. You got a question, brother? 
All right, we going to the area code. You know, this is a long number, 447. Hello? Peace. Yeah, peace. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, sir. Got a question? All right. Peace, this is, uh, Pan- this is Panaji from the UK. Greetings. Greetings. What up, brother? Greetings, yeah. Uh, basically, Panaji, I just wanted to ask you, um, you see when you say that you talk with spirits like Michael Jackson, Rick James and all that, yeah, do you talk with them in their physical form or through feeling, if you know what I mean, or through symbolism, through dreams? Oh, okay. Um, through... I guess you could say intuition through yeah. knowing through uh 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 you'll feel the energy, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And mm-hmm. you'll hear you'll actually hear them speaking to you. In the beginning oh, you would you would he, you would get an impression with your own voice. Then mm. the more you brought into it you would actually hear like your thoughts speak out of turn. So you know mm-hmm. you think at a regular pace and going to the store, go to, and someone would jump out, turn to the left, and you know yeah, it seems yeah. out of whack. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So you you turn to the left and you may see something or do something or it may start something. So you realize that something else is talking to you, and then yeah, yeah. Um, the more the better you get at it, the more you'll hear, feel, and understand, be able to decode the energy. You'll know when it's a Michael Jackson movie. Even now, even if Michael Jackson was alive, this time you'll wake up and go, damn, I feel like listening to some Michael Jackson. Or, damn, I feel like listening to some Jimi Hendrix. So so when these guys are dead and you understand channeling, you feel, you you understand your spirit is calling for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then you may put it on and get inspired. So it can happen Mm. in many ways. You get what I'm saying? Dreams. Um, uh, What you call coincidence. Which is synchronicity. Yeah. You just have to make yourself sensitive to okay. to the shit that's happening around you, and it'll become mm. clear. Yeah. All right. Okay. And uh, one more question. This is a basic question. Yes. Um, you see, uh, certain yogis, right, when they've reached a certain like skill on how to masturbate, how do you reach? The, how do you like shoot the sperm up the pineal gland? Because I've only seen information about how you know you hold your PC muscle and everything, but how do you? What's the direct? Because I, 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 I haven't seen that to, much for the pineal. No. Yeah, yeah. How for do you the shoot pineal the sperm back to the pineal? Yeah. Oh, oh. Um. Uh. Well, it's 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 you got to visualize, yeah. and okay. you, you visualize pulling from your groin the energy going yeah. to the pineal. Okay. And actually, um, that technique is in a book called Cyclomancy, a book that I sell. Okay. And right, they, right. they talk about the brain horns, how to build up energy in um, the back of your mind. It's, it's a lot of visualization, how to build up energy in, in the back of your mind, shoot it through the eyes, shoot it to the pineal. Um, in fact, okay. Khadija is actually reading it now, so it's it's oh, actually shit. a technique, but 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 yeah. it's visualization. But you you, you got to pull from your groin, um, mm. but you're not just flexing the PC muscle. You you're visualizing it that you as you tighten, you're shooting a spark Uh-oh. up to the back of the brain, and yeah. um, um, you'll start to energize uh, uh, the, the sperm. Now the sperm also has a path from the pineal to the uh, to the to the testicles anyway, um, mm. through your spinal fluid, and um, so you're, what you're pulling up actually is what they call solar phallic energy, not the actual liquid, but the energy that gets the woman pregnant is yeah. actually what you're holding on to. So if you do it enough, you can bust all the solar phallic energy. Solar phallic energy. So uh, it's okay. the light that's on your sperm. Yeah. The light uh, uh, in your sperm is actually what gets the woman pregnant. So okay. if you get good, you can retain your light. See, mm. I could bust off all day and still run a full port. You get what I'm saying? Because I'm not using I'm not using my I'm not using my light. I'm not releasing uh, any light. I know how to keep it in the mind. You get what I'm saying? The idea is you build all the light in the mind, and then when you want to have a kid, 
to release that light yeah. and have a genius. And that's all through thought. Say it again. That's all through thought. Is it all through the mind? All through thought. All from what's the word? Uh, thought, thought, thought. Like so, cephalic energy comes from thought. From the from oh, the mind, well, basically. Uh, I'm not sure. What what? Like I said, there's plenty of tantric techniques. Yeah, that's yeah, one yeah, that's yeah. worked for me. There's plenty of tantric techniques, but the idea is that you're reserving your energy. And of course, there's there's not uh, injaculation. You know what I mean? You go on. Yeah. Lean teaches tantra classes, so yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. there's there's plenty of you know what I mean. There's plenty of techniques. Depends. On, I guess it's just gonna be about what floats your boat. As a magician, me, I put an into to no shit and into wrapping my dick up in no rubber bands and none of that bullshit. I was strictly into the uh, and it depends on how strong your mind is. I was strictly into using my mind to to reserve my energy. And yeah, I yeah. was able to make it work for me. You know what I mean? So it's about what works for you. Uh, anything my mind talk Chia, um, you know, I'm to- cultivating the male energy and all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, he teaches you techniques, how to hang your nuts off the edge of the chair and do the PC muscles. And it's yes, always yes. something, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So I I hear you. You, you know, you're just researching that. You're just researching that area. and uh, Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you'll find something that works for you. All right, brother. Well, peace to you. Oh, yeah, and uh, just compliments. I did that uh, Ganesh ritual. I'm not going to lie. I was Good. expecting money, but... Mm-hmm. Instead of money, I was in the studio making my house music, and then after, I actually ended up randomly coming up like making a fucking. You know what I'm saying? What happened? Basically, I did the Ganesh ritual. You know the Ganesh ritual where you put it in the uh, bath and you put powder. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I, I'm not gonna lie, I was expecting money because you know I'm trying to build a home studio and uh, I'm 18 and that. Then mm-hmm. after I'm waiting, I'm waiting. The day that I did the Ganesh ritual, I um, went to college normal day, went to the studio, and then after I ended up producing, not pro- coming, I ended up producing a fucking banger, which I believe that's gonna sell by accident. Mm. Excellent. So, you know yeah. what I'm saying, so, that Ganesha ritual, that shit ain't no joke. About two other people <laughs> emailed me about some check shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I just got this check and I, insurance money and this and that. I'm like, that motherfucking ritual is some shit that work. Trust me. You know what I'm saying? You know. That's some shit that work. I ain't never seen a ritual work that easy. If y'all niggas don't know, what you do is get your Ganesha mm-hmm. statue and bathe that shit in curry. Give it curry, yes. make it a curry party. And those two combinations, whatever it is, some shit happens. Some yeah. shit happens. You know, people... You know, people that, are, that are a little bit wacko. The, the, mm-hmm. the statue does not have to be expensive. Just get you like a $5, right. you know what I'm saying? $2 one, you know what I'm saying? You got to tell them niggas, you know. Exactly. doesn't have to be expensive at all. Yeah. And if you can't find a Ganesha elephant, all you need is an elephant, mm. which you can find at a China shop. That'll substitute. And man, mm-hmm. believe me, that shit work. That shit work miracles. You ever yeah, bro, bro, put that shit in curry and just go for yours? Definitely, definitely. All right, thank, thank you, there, man. Have a, have a, have a, have a good night, man. Have a good night. All right, bro. Good luck with your, uh, uh, with your music business. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, but. No problem. All right, we got area code three four seven. Area code three four seven. You're on the line. Hello, my name is Alex Raphael. I just wanted to say what's up. Man. Al, what up? Oh love. shit, what up, Al? Good, good, man. Yeah, you switched <laughs> me over real quick over the last time. I'm like, oh man, I should have talked faster. So I just wanted to, you know, just do that. This is my man. I last. talk about Al all the fucking time, yo. No, I tell Yo, the story when my man fell off the bus. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, man. Oh man, on the 
computer on the back of his neck and drop his fucking computer. So y'all know I ain't lying. This shit happened. You know what I'm saying? He was working his whole shit, blew up, and he fell off the bus. That shit was funny. Al, what's going on, bro? I'm glad you're listening. Good, man. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to let you know I'm with you, man. And every time I tune in, you you hit it right on the head, man. I ain't even got a question. I just, you know, this is a matter of presenting myself as uh, as another example of your meddling. You know what I'm saying, but yeah, other than yeah, that, I'm just, yeah, I'm just living. Yeah, Al's my man. This everything thing is that, a funny um, thing, yeah. everything that you got me messing with, just you know, just has me busy, just has me doing it, because it's yeah. always yeah. turning all of this light into the expression. Because you know, as you can tell, I was never really a savvy nigga. You know what I'm saying? So I'm always dealing with that aspect of myself. So I'm just like. Trying to find out the best way. Nah, to you just so. always getting down with me. Like you would always fuck me, whatever I was fucking with at the time. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, yo, you that's just straight. In. First world order radio. Finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always gonna be somebody in the building. On First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesday. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works.